What's going on? Back today at Eels Mountain, Eel, Dick and Nancy Eels Preserve at Music Mountain. And uh, I was looking at the map last night, and uh, there's a trail way out on the other end here, which I haven't done yet. Um, I figured go out and check it out and see what, it, see what it's like. I don't know how much of it I'll get in. Um, as you can tell, it's we've got a little snow, and it's snowing a little bit right now, which isn't supposed to be happening. It's supposed to be a beautiful sunny day today. Um, and I don't have my micro specs because I didn't expect there to be snow up here. So we'll see. We'll see how far I make it. But uh, at least going to get out and enjoy a little bit of the outdoors. Uh, in the cold, it's going to warm up. It's going to be like in the 50s in the middle of the week. It's a really weird winter this year. Not what they were calling at all. So let's go check out what on the map I saw is called the Pink Floyd Trail. Now I remember seeing the sign for it before. Um, so we'll see. It's going to be like six miles total if I do the, it's like the Pink Floyd and, uh, yeah, crap, I forget what the other one's called. It's, it's got somebody's name. It's like a, uh, a return loop, but it, it's not on the map at the kiosk. So we'll be curious to see what we, what we got out there. So let's go check it out. up here. I don't know if that's going to pick up that wind whipping through those conductors up there. But wow. I hope this trail isn't wide open because all I got on is, is my hoodie. You know, I got a couple layers underneath but no wind protection layer. It was calm down the town. Whew. Different story up here. So, to get to the uh, Pink Floyd Trail, it's about 1.2 miles to get up to this section. Like I said, it doesn't show it on the kiosk map, but on their, uh, well, actually I don't know if it's on the online map, to be honest. Um, I found it on Google Maps, and I do remember seeing the uh, sign for it up here, which is right up ahead of us. So the sign is right up here, right at the trail junction. So this is um, the far end of the Blueberry Trail, which cuts off over here. All right, Blueberry Trail goes that way. And I think part of the Blueberry Trail goes that way too. I don't know, that's what Google Maps says. Like I said, the, the map on says different so I swear there was a sign up here uh, it's not possible that got blown down I still I don't see it I swear there was a sign right here it said Pink Floyd Trail I think pretty sure it's the road pretty sure it's the road this let's see let's do a little this is what you do when you're not sure and the signs are gone I'm gonna go over to uh, switch hands here I go over here to what I know is the blueberry trail pretty sure yes blue blaze for the blueberry trail All right blue blaze on that tree 
pretty sure you can see that. This trail over here has blue blaze. So I'm going to do the math in my head there and say, if you carry the one, that's the blueberry trail. So this should be the uh, Pink Floyd Trail. Man, I wish there was a sign. It, it used to be, unless it was right here. But there's, like I said, either somebody took it down or it got blown down. But I do not see it anymore. I kind of remember just kind of stuck in the ground. I have to look at old footage. Because I know at one point I got footage of it. No, there was a sign here. It's long since gone. So I am going to take what I think is the Pink Floyd Trail. It is a road. This goes into State Game Lands. This goes into State Game Lands number. 300. And like I said on the uh, on the map, actually I can pull up the Google Maps. That tell me. Um, there's foot traffic in here. Uh, on the map, when I looked at uh, Earth, Google Earth or satellite view, whatever you want to call it now, it showed it was on a road. Uh, like a forest road. Um, and it's gonna go down for a little ways and then run into a loop trail. So this doesn't look so bad. That wind is something though. These blueberry bushes here actually protect me from the wind a little bit. I'm about to head into some tree cover here, so I think I'll be all right. I'm gonna check with the, the map, and if I'm not on the trail, I think I am, I'll get back to you. I think this is that Pink Floyd trail. That was muddy and icy. I keep the camera low to keep it out of the out of the wind. So I'm at the. Uh, this is indeed, indeed, uh, the uh, Pink Floyd Trail. I was called the Pink Loop. The Pink Floyd Trail. This is the other trail that I think I'm gonna be coming down. It's called like Earl's Loop or something like that. Like I'll put it at the bottom. I had signal for a second. I was able to pull uh, the map, the, the Google Maps version uh, and I saw the the name for the uh, Pink Floyd Trail I didn't think to look at the other one but no it's somebody's name loop trail so we'll go out we're gonna head into the forest here in a minute oh what do we got here we'll head into the uh, not the forest the uh, state game lands 300 in a uh, right down a trail here somewhere There's a little view here. What I'm hoping for is once we get down here to the back side of this loop, um, looking out towards the other side of the mountain that you generally can't see from the Eels Preserve side. So it might be a cool kind of uh, view from out there that I've, 
for as far as I know I've never seen um, I mean I've been down in that that side of the the valley that's looking out towards um, what's down our Lake Ariel and uh, like Varden that that area which if, you know you know if you're from the area um, but I don't know if we'll be able to see anything down there so far this is what it's been uh, just an excess road which is kind of nice because it's wide and if it if I'm out here longer than I think and it starts getting dark it'll be an easy hike it's wider than I'm used to at least it's not paved right in here somewhere I don't know if it's even gonna be marked but it is the boundary uh, between state game lands number 300 that we're crossing into and eels preserve that we're leaving I don't see any markers there's no gates there's no sign there's no sometimes you'll see a white marking on a tree oh here we go there's a post right there Actually, it looks like it might be a game trail. There's a post right in there. And if you look on the map. I'm going to bring up the brightness there. You can't see that, kind of. So right there. You're not going to see that. Oh, we're right. That is the boundary. So we're now in state game lands number 300 now as you can tell behind me the trail hasn't gotten any tougher uh, almost to the back of the Pink Floyd Trail. So I'm gonna get up here, to start, start, to start looping to the left, and somewhere in there it turns into, to be able to get signal again, the Eugene Loop. So if you're hiking over by uh, uh, in the Eels Preserve, Music Mountain Preserve, and you're looking at the maps, there is Eugene's Loop, which goes out into the State Game Lands 300. And down below it is Gene's Trail. Eugene's Loop and Gene's Trail. Two separate things. So don't, don't get too confused. Um, sun came out for a minute. It was pretty nice. I'm turning around to I'm heading towards. Wind has not died down any, but I've been relatively protected. Switch it off to this hand. Now, this might be the turn, because I know the road I'm on goes straight and then Eugene's trail or Eugene's loop goes off to the left. So that might be Eugene's loop. As the snow starts again. And that just keeps taking us deeper into the game lands. And unfortunately, at least from here, there's no view off onto that side of the mountain. So yeah, this is the Eugene loop. About two and a half miles back to um the main trail I was on so shouldn't be too bad we'll take a look at what we got here not exactly the most exciting hike though that wind makes it a little exciting I don't even know how much of me you're gonna hear there's right in it now I'm glad I decided oops I'm 
glad I decided to wear the neck gaiter. Frost Eve. Looks like, like a scat of some kind. Just a Frost Eve. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I decided to wear the neck gaiter. Without the, the shell on, uh, that wind would be brutal. I would have had to turn around by now. Maybe there'll be a view out on this side. I doubt it. I didn't see anything marked. Like I said. And in the, I bet in the fall, when these blueberries are, are turning red, and you got a little bit of yellow and all this birch, I bet this is gorgeous out here. didn't come out. Bro, oh, there he is. Or she. Don't know if the GoPro will pick that up. There's a, at least one, maybe two white tails. They're just right here, just shooting that little shot back there. It's kind of cool. Apparently the deer thought so too. They're right. They might even bed it down right in here. <clears throat> but he ran straight back. That was cool see some game in the game lands. Beautiful spot right here. Of course, airplane. And it's kind of, it's always nice to have a, a view, an overlook or something like that to see, but when you're on a trail, that's just got this kind of wild beauty about it. Cannot argue. A lot of birch in here. Um, not sure what these are. But a lot of this uh, scrub oak, you can tell scrub oak, real tiny little oak trees. There's an acorn cap. They don't get real big out here. And this isn't a particularly tall mountain that we're on. Music Mountain's only, I think, 20, 2,200 feet, I think. But it's just because it's on, you know, the valley is to my right, uh, the Lackawanna Valley. And then you got the, because uh, they're considered the back mountains over on the other side. I don't know what you actually consider those. But you got that little mountain range over there. And you get the Lackawanna Valley runs from way up north. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what they consider it up at that end. Um, down through Scranton, it turns into the Wyoming Valley uh, down south of Scranton. And it just keeps running between these two mountain ranges. And you just get all kinds of weather building up in here. And usually up on top of these things, you get wind, regardless of what's like down below. This feels very much like um, in the Worthington State Forest, the Mount Tammany Fire Line Trail. I just did a couple months ago. Very reminiscent of that. Now this is the trickiest part of the trail so far. It's because it's so swampy. Did a real good job of staying dry 
keep my feet dry through that to like the last step right before I turn the camera on. Then the ground just sank. Got a little, little soggy. Definitely missing those seal skins right now. Yeah, it's fairly marshy section. I think I'm still on the trail. Looks like it. This follows this road. It just kind of disappears here, but. So Eugene's loop a little rockier than the Pink Floyd Trail, um, which is a nice change. And there's trees behind me. It's gorgeous out here. A lot of uh, game trails running through. And I know I'm just about back into the preserve lands. I should start seeing those little posts here pretty soon. It's a little maddening though, because I'm looking around, got all this wood hanging down. There's dead standing trees all over the place. When I'm out backpacking, you can never find that stuff. <laughs> Can't camp out here. It's everywhere. And it's not like you go out and it's, it's all cut down. It just doesn't exist in some of the spots so you, you backpack around here. It's kind of, oh, it's frustrating. But yeah, this is, oh cool, we're gonna go through these. So this is a little uh, pitch pine grove. Right angle. That's a little better. I thought I was seeing some of those markings by now. They don't have them over here. I know we're close. Uh, oh, here's a cairn. Yeah, that's an indicator. Or there's just a natural rock pile right there. Take the old glove off. Look at the map. According to the map, we're right on the border. That little rock pile might actually be an indicator. Put the glove back on. It gets chilly when the wind blows. It's only like 30 degrees up here. Here we go. Here's the post. Very odd. I've never seen game lands 
I've marked a border with those before. Kind of odd. So we're now back into the Eels Preserve, Music Mountain Preserve. The trail's a little more trail -y here. Less road. But because we're back in the preserve, that means we're going to run back into the Pink Floyd Trail here pretty soon. Maybe in the next five minutes. Back on the main trail. A nice hike. Ooh, it gets a little enclosed here. So I've got a little bit of a view. I do apologize for the wind. And unfortunately, the light's not the best right now. With the clouds, but... Way off in the distance out here, there's a little sun. It's not gonna come up and get it with the phone, but right, right in the blue sky there, right in this little dip of the clouds, is the moon. So the last like. 150 feet of the trail has been these mostly iced over puddles that from up the trail always just look like flat rock but uh, no it's just all ice luckily there's enough small rocks to use for, uh, for foot holds so to speak but we are back to the uh, I'll see like this Looks like it's covered nice, it kind of is. I'm gonna get off that. Walk over here in the softer stuff. Um, so we're back to uh, the Pink Floyd Trail, and I just found this. I didn't see it when I walked in. I don't see any marking. anywhere else for the other part or for the uh, Pink Floyd Trail. That picture that was pretty cool. Yeah, I don't see anything written on these rocks for it. Although there is, there's my glove. A little paint marking here I didn't see before. Doesn't really tell you anything. Not like it's a hard trail to follow. Uh, it's just a road. So, all right, I gotta head back out to the car. Uh, I think about I'm trying to remember, maybe half a mile back to the, the main trail. I gotta try to make a little bit of time here because that sun is getting low. signal the temperature had definitely dropped just down about 29 according to my phone but I don't know where it's pulling that from so I'm gonna guess it up here in the mountain it's at least a couple degrees colder but that wind chill the wind has got to be pushing the wind chill factor 
down to the the low teens, maybe pushing single digits that it actually, the air actually feels like. Whew. And I'm back on the main. This this is the section that takes me straight back down to the car. So I got about a mile to go. But once I get up to that crest and start going down to the car, I just have the feeling I'm gonna be getting punched in the face with wind. Really, really glad that I brought the the neck gator now. Whew. Now, I know you look at what I'm wearing, and I'm just wearing like, yeah, nothing fancy, right? Pants and a hoodie. But I do, I do have a couple layers on underneath this. Uh, it's doing pretty good. This new hoodie is, uh, it's more polyester, and I don't know if that, it's like 80% polyester, and I, it, it makes it more waterproof, or not waterproof, but it, it wicks away water better, dries a little faster. Um, but it seems to block the wind pretty good. I'm actually pretty surprised. Only when it really starts gusting up am I feeling the wind. Uh, and that's because it's kind of going down through the any gaps at the neck. But these OR gloves have always been great. They're actually like, I don't think they're windproof. The hat is, uh, uh, that's actually marked as a windproof hat. This thing is, like I can feel the hat getting cooler as the wind blows, but I'm not getting cold. I'm wearing a base layer of pant underneath. So layers, 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 layers. I see people all the time just wearing like big puffy jackets and they're cold. That's all they're wearing is a big puffy jacket, like a t-shirt underneath it. And I go hike and buy them. I'm dressed like this. They look at me like I'm nuts. But I'm actually pretty warm. Uh, if that wind let down, I'd almost be sweating right now. So, uh, but it's always, a, a jacket would be probably wise if I was gonna be out here any longer. And uh, the temperatures were gonna drop anymore. But I'm pretty comfortable with what I got. And like I said, once I get over this hill, I'll almost be able to see the car. So, now I doubt the GoPro is going to pick that up, but there's beams of sun just coming down through those clouds. Really cool. Yeah, I think this is the last of the protection from the wind I'm going to get. I'm almost up that crest. I can hear the wind whipping over my head. Whew. Oh. That's, I don't think it's going to be a fun walk once I get to that part. So, looking back over into Lackawanna Valley here. And that's what I was talking about before. This, It just keeps going up. You can kind of see the trees, the mountain range keeps going up on the other side. The music mountains keep going up, and I think it becomes Archibald Mountain up the other side. And it keeps on going, and going, and going, and going. So weather just sits down in this valley, and it just rushes up to here, rushes down to here. And you can see over on the other side, there's a few, a few gaps. So that there's a valley on that side, and then you can see back behind these ones here. Set of mountains back there, and so the, all this wind just rides over these mountains. This is really cool when we've got snow. When there's actual snow out there, and it's just all white and clean looking. Actually, quite nice. Obviously, made it back to the car. It only took me about a half hour to get back to the car from the upper trail because it's all downhill. Uh, that wind was wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but the temperature's definitely dropping. Last time I checked, uh, let's see, it says now, it's back up to 30, it says, but it feels feels colder than that. That's probably the wind chill. So, hope you guys enjoyed the hike here at uh, Music Mountain Preserve, Eels Preserve, Dick and Nancy Eels Preserve, at Music Mountain, Staking Lands 300, out there. 
at the Pink Floyd Trail in Eugene Loop. Uh, I'm just glad I got out. Six miles is pretty good for the day, considering got a late start. Uh, if you liked it, hit that thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next.